Yo, what's going on everybody? It's your boy Nori to explain here, bring you guys another Boruto 2 Blue Vortex discussion. Today, I want to talk to you guys about why Naruto's baby girl, the sweet and lovable Himawari Uzumaki, the current person who is using Kurama's chakra, why this last chapter of 2 Blue Vortex has seemingly just set her up for an even bigger role in the story moving forward, a bigger role than any of us have considered. That's why in today's newest Naruto Explained video, we're going to ring the alarm bells and we're going to lay out the case for why if you are not holding on to those Uzumaki stocks of Himawari, if you bought them early, you definitely need to. And if you haven't, then you really need to start buying these Himawari stocks before they start shooting off to the moon because that rocket ship, it is now fully prepared to blast off. In chapter 16, we had Kashin Koji flat out state that under no circumstances were they to allow Himawari to leave Konoha because the moment that she did so, she would be killed by Jura. He's basically telling Shikamaru, the acting Hokage, I need you to do the opposite of what Tsunade did, which is when she learned that the Akatsuki were after Naruto, she thought the best way to avoid any issues was to have Naruto constantly on the move, out on missions because it make it harder for the Akatsuki to pin down Naruto's location, which that ended up being correct. Since all the other Jinchuriki for the most part were confined to their village, it made it very easy for the Akatsuki to capture them and to have their beads extracted. Kashin Koji is someone who acts purely from a logical perspective. He doesn't say or do anything without reason. Even before he awakened the Ten Direction Shinjutsu, it was all part of his personality. We saw it repeatedly. Now that he does have 10 directions though, he takes all the responsibility of that power extremely seriously and for him to say that they under no circumstances are to allow Himawari to leave the village, it means that she is a much bigger piece to the puzzle and it goes beyond just wanting to make sure that Jura does not consume her because the story has laid out hints that not only is Koji willing to cross moral lines to create a future where Boruto can save Sasuke and they can destroy Jura, but he is also someone who is dead set on making sure that the pieces he requires to bring about that change are still in play, they are undisturbed, and they will never change for him. It's the one unbreakable rule that he seemingly has, which means whether or not you want it, Himawari has a much bigger role to play in the story, in Boruto's story, period, and even more so when you realize that Kashin Koji and Momoshiki, they're working on opposite ends of the spectrum using the same ability, which we'll touch on that briefly towards the end. Now, to be fully transparent so you guys know my bias, I was one of those people who originally liked the idea of Himawari never being a ninja. I thought it was a pretty brilliant idea back in 2014 when Naruto Chapter 700 dropped to have Naruto's two children go a different route. One walk in the path of becoming a ninja and following in the footsteps of his family and living up to his namesake since Boruto is named after Neji, a play on the pun for both of their names with Boruto meaning bolt and Neji meaning screw and the other being sweet little Himawari choosing to not go down that path. When we saw her, she showed zero signs of wanting to be a ninja. She was more so focused on putting flowers on the grave of Neji than anything else and it made complete sense. This was seemingly a time where the world was at peace. So there wasn't any real need for there to be more shinobi. That's why being a shinobi was stated in the anime early on to be something that was optional. Outside of the shinobi tradition continuing to go on and even non-shinobi children being expected to learn some basics of chakra and ninjutsu because they're doing just enough to keep the manpower and the knowledge of ninjutsu out there in the world in case anything dire ever happened. However, that all changed when a few months later into Naruto Gaiden, the seventh Hokage in the Scarlet Spring, when that dropped in 2015, better known to those you guys who watched Boruto's anime first as the Shin Uchiha arc, Kishimoto had Sasuke write out that there's a threat that existed stronger than Kaguya that he was worried about. The tensions, they just continued to rise in the several months after that when Boruto the movie would drop in, we see firsthand exactly what Sasuke is referring to. There were a different pair of invaders who had Kaguya so spooked that she would prepare a Zetsu army to fight them, a plan that would have worked if it came to it. And then years later, when Boruto Naruto Next Generation's Chapter 10 dropped, 
we learned that things were indeed changing in the shinobi world because there was more otsuski trickery that was coming out now that boruto had momoshiki's curse mark that was our first sign that despite Himawari's kind and sweet demeanor, she was going to be forced to become a ninja at some point because there comes a time where what we want isn't what we end up getting because life has a tendency to make decisions for us when we least expect it or least desire it to do so. And that's what ended up happening. And Himawari subconsciously saw this is where her life would be taking her down this route. That's why Ikimoto's involvement in the Himawari Academy arc for Boruto was so telling and why it grabbed my attention. It was showing us that even though the manga, she had all this uncertainty as to whether or not she'd become a ninja, she looked like a non-combatant in the manga. That arc in the anime that he assisted with, it planted seeds that not only did she have the talent, but also that more likely than not, she would be walking down that path. By this time, Boruto was brought back to life by Momoshiki. Her mind, when that happened, it was 99% of the way made up. She basically told her mom her reason for wanting to become a ninja was to help Boruto, and she wanted to know if something like that might make Hinata cry. Fast forward, and Kawaki steals away their parents. Omnipotence gets casted, and she, along with the majority of the world, believes that Boruto killed her parents and isn't really her brother, and she spent the last three years training following a path that the story originally never set up for her because the salt times that she grew up in, they had been changed due to becoming hard times and that Hugo blood in her body, it was raging, ready to go. And the literal seed of Kurama was born inside of her and she had been given the power to begin shaping that future when Kurama transmigrated to that seed and to help shape it into an even better one. While Boruto and Koji did appear to be shocked that Himawari had the nine tails and that Jura was now targeting her, what we do know is that after this happens, Kashin Koji appears to have gotten a vision for something related to Himawari because even though it's an unexpected event, he's seemingly seen something and he's seen the alternate branches that have popped out. So now he is preparing to deal with them and whatever it is has to be absolutely grim because her fate has now been confirmed to be worse than death. Boruto when he arrived never said anything about, hey, don't let Himawari out of your sight because Himawari at that time, they did not know she had Kurama's power. Not just being turned into a tree like all the other awakened Shinju, her fate, it was implicitly stated to be death in the manga and that Ninetales chakra inside of her might be why. Jinchuriki died once the Biju chakra sealed away inside of them is extracted. Uzumaki can live for a little bit longer but they ultimately still die after the fact. Jura, when he and the other Shinju trap someone in a tree, they for all intents and purposes are extracting chakra from the people trapped to make the thorn soul bulbs that end up getting harvested. But with Himawari possessing Biju chakra, Biju chakra that once belonged to a Tintails, you have to start wondering if Himawari being trapped in a tree doesn't mean that that's a more complex extraction which means that she wouldn't just be in a comatose state, she would literally be dead. For Kashin Koji to stress this, for Himawari, it means one of two things. Number one, which I think is the most important thing here, is Himawari is Boruto's thumbscrew. Number two, Himawari has a critical role, a crucial role to play in Jura's plan and in Kashin Koji's plan to take down Jura. She is a key to both of those individuals. Starting with point number one, look at how the chapter was teeing up the difference between Boruto and Kashin Koji. Boruto was okay with using this power for the sake of saving others because he viewed it as his duty. He had a moral obligation to use that power of the future to save the lives of everyone he could. It's the classic shonen do-gooder mentality, especially because shonen are these coming of age stories meant to show the ups and downs of growth and what are oftentimes the lives of younger protagonists who are learning how the greater world around them operates. Boruto is being told by Kashin Koji, the adult in the room, the wise guy, the wise man. If you know, you know that his knowledge is not something they should share just with anyone because they have to be selective when they intervene in matters that deal with the future. Not everyone, they can be saved. Kashin Koji is seemingly okay with making major sacrifices for the sake of ensuring the future they're fighting for is still maintained. 
Koji is not someone who is going to think twice about looking at someone who Boruto cares about and weighing their life against preserving the future. It's a very common trope for this type of story that uses these types of powers. Naruto is a franchise, has played with this before, with Minato weighing his desire to raise his son against his duty as Hokage versus Naruto being unable to choose his duty as Hokage over his duty as a father when it comes to killing Boruto to prevent Momoshiki from being resurrected. For Kashin Koji, there is nobody, potentially not even Boruto himself, who he wouldn't feel comfortable using if it meant saving the future. He is someone who came up under Amato, and he is the person that filled that role for Amato being the one that was sent on a suicide mission where he fought with the intention to survive, but he was expected to die. Jura has been described as being this worst possible outcome. If death for Boruto at the right moment in time is what is needed to take him down, Koji is grooming Boruto to accept that mentality. However, the issue is that we don't know how much of the future that Kashin Koji has told Boruto because he's made it clear he doesn't want to give too much information to other people. While he was only talking about Boruto in that moment, we can also assume reading between the lines, he took that same approach to Boruto in order to prevent Boruto from acting in a way that throws off everything he saw on this particular path of 10 directions because they're trying to save Sasuke and save the world without Boruto dying. What is the one thing that could make and will make Boruto throw caution to the wind? What is the one thing that has consistently been written as Boruto's thumbscrew? The one thing that you take him apart the moment you discover it. It's always been his sister Himawari, someone who he has put before himself time and time again before. We have to ask ourselves this very important question right now, which is whether or not Koji saw how Boruto reacts if Himawari is killed and if that is what leads to Boruto dying in the future. I don't think we can question that at all. I think we have to prepare for that being a possible outcome because he never told Boruto how he would die fighting Jura and why they're even fighting to begin with. The story intentionally left that bit of context out there for a clear reason. It's going to be relevant later on because it is too big of context to leave unsettled. Do any of us doubt if Himawari is in danger? It leads to Boruto becoming reckless. I don't think so. Kashin Koji was written as saying that to know what the future means means to inevitably lead to destroying the future and Koji is not the only person with the ability that has been shown to see the future. Momoshiki's seen it. He's seen possible outcomes that never came to be. That is 10 directions. Like Momoshiki saw possible outcomes where he could take over Boruto's body after Boruto lost the will to live. It was supposed to happen with omnipotence getting cast it, but Sarda sending Sasuke to save Boruto, it changed that. Just as Kashin Koji told Boruto, if you change something, my 10 directions, it now becomes useless because everything that we're planning for, it has now changed. Could this be a back door to give Momoshiki an opportunity because any information Boruto retains, Momoshiki has access to it too, leading all to the more reason Koji probably has not told Boruto everything. We also have to ask if Jura is getting his hands on Himawari means that Jura unlocking a higher state of enlightenment is possible, which I do believe we have to consider that to be the case because he is far too set on getting Himawari and the story has placed too much emphasis on the fact that we can't let any of the Shinju eat their targets. If that applies to people like Matsuri eating trash like Konohamaru, you better believe that Kashin Koji saw something dark where Jura was eating Himawari out of left field and singing Mama Uzumaki, what can I say but you're welcome, before something dark happened that left a scar so deeply on the mind of Koji from seeing that terrible future that the only thing that truly cured him was watching this new Naruto Explain video on the left or over here on the right. He saw the possible future where he looked at this video for my Anime Explained channel where I discuss non-Naruto content. 